हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स मैं रोज जय कुमार यार गाइस एज चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स एंड यू नो प्रोस्पेक्टिव चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स यू ऑलवेज नीड टू सी व्हाट हैपेंस प्रैक्टिकली इट्स नॉट जस्ट लर्निंग बाय रोट वी आल्सो नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ थिंग्स वर्क प्रैक्टिकली सो आई हैव बीन रिलीजिंग सम फ्यू वीडियोस व्हिच विद अ प्रैक्टिकल यू नो बेंट ऑफ माइंड विद अ प्रैक्टिकल बेंट ऑफ माइंड सो एज टू यू नो एंटाइस यू गाइस to think practically so many videos have been released and you guys have been encouraging me really well so one of you had messaged me if i can do a video on uh, byju's you know india's most valued startup it's a decacon so decacon means deca means 10 so decacon is anything more than 10 billion usd so i think the rough valuation as on 2022 for byju's is around 22 billion us dollars so it's a decacon so recently it was in the news for all the wrong reasons as you see uh, the financial results of the year you know uh, 2021 financial year 2021 when should you file guys when should you file the uh, financial statements let's go to companies act little bit quickly let's go to companies act as per section 137 tell me when should you file copy of the financial statements including the consolidated financial statement along with all the documents should be uh, filed under 137 within 30 days of the date of annual general meeting so ideally uh, 2021 the worst case scenario the agm should have been held on 30th september and within 30 days by october 21 it had to be filed it was actually filed over a year later in 2022 or almost a year later in 2022 it was filed my dear friends but why because the auditors refused to sign off on the balance sheet they refused to sign off on the balance sheet and the readjusted revenue mind you readjusted revenue of byju's was i think around uh, 2280 crores now what is this readjusted revenue let us see so let us now uh, dive into the entire thing if you see the revenue break up of byju's uh this is financial year 20 the old one 19 million this is you know 2021 so to speak if you see all figures in crore there was nothing with respect to the course fee and here we have made money streaming services little less but as you can see sale of edu edutech pro uh, products was better in in the previous year than what was there in financial year 2021 so roughly around the readjusted revenue was around 2280 crore what do you mean by readjustment we'll come to that you see revenue from operations as i told you is 2280 crores and the expenses my dear friends of byju's this year was 7027 crore whopping number huge and a loss of almost around 4564 crore i mean it is really crazy previous year it was just 305 see this incredible incredible and even in the revenue of course it is nothing great here so ultimately there is what do you say even in the projected revenue projected revenue was somewhere else and see the loss there was a reduction of almost 48% in the projected revenue this revenue only they would have told that while raising funds etc they would have given this revenue but if you see the actual figures it's a 48% uh, drop now where did they spend so much 7000 crore the culprit here is promotions and employee benefits promotions and employee benefits if you see previous year all this you see this at tech product 774 crore teachers fees from zero it has gone up to 297 employee benefits my dear friends from 420 nice number 420 crores to 1943 crores right finance cost depreciation and amortization business promotion mind boggling 2250 crore this business promotion is more than the combined business promotion of all the other people your an academy their uh, vedanta and all this other people put together vedanta learning put together this is more mind boggling and other expenses 1503 that's a suspense account we put now in accounts 11503 unbelievable unbelievable now what do you mean by revised or readjusted revenue what were the problems why were the accounts delayed so long what was the issue main problem my dear friends was revenue recognition in days 
so let me give you an example let me give you an example to make you understand uh, we know something that you know called as prepaid expense yeah prepaid expense we would have seen in uh, accounts so let's say uh, a company a takes uh, an insurance on their inventory okay they take an insurance on their inventory let's say they take it in june 2022 okay they take in june 2022 for one year that is june 22 to let's say may 31st 2023 if you observe this is falling in between two financial years now what is the two financial years that is of course from 1st april 2021 to sorry one second sorry this is yeah one is it is falling in 2022 23 one more it is falling in 23 24 as you know let's say the insurance amount is around 1 cr so guys how do i recognize this one uh, one crore obviously for around 10 months correct that is from june onwards june onwards till march 23 for 10 months this one crore should be proportionately you know uh, split between the two so obviously uh, for 10 months for 10 months it should 10 by 12 that is it should go into 22 23 and this should be you know for two months for two months two by 12 it should one crore should be apportioned here yeah, this you already know normal accounts similarly revenue also has to be recognized like that as per as uh, in day as 119 AS9 is the old one, Inde AS119. So, Byju's will come under Inde AS119. So, let us say uh, the fees for anybody who is st studying 8th standard, 9th standard, and 10th standard, he will be paying a fee at the beginning itself at 1,20,000 rupees, assume. Should I recognize the revenue on when the student joins 8th standard, when the student joins Byju's at 8th standard, or should it be spread across the three? Now, all the earlier years, they were recognizing revenue immediately at the point of sale, that time only. But Deloitte, Deloitte, the auditors now said, nothing doing boss, as per India's 119, you should recognize as and when the, uh, you know, services performed across three years you should do. So, that's why there was a dip in the revenue. Uh, the roughly around, I think, if I'm not on 109 crores, but still that will not put a major dent in the loss of 4,000 odd crore. Think about it, right? The dent is just 100, but yes, this was one of the main reasons revenue recognition. Though uh, the Baiju said 1,153 crores or something was what Baiju Ravindran said, but nevertheless, let's uh, get back. So basically, yeah, 1,156, this is what Baiju had told. Uh, and also the same auditors also have opined that revenues from transfer of product to certain customers made under deferred payment terms. So there will be EMI basis, there will be what do you say, uh, installment scheme, there will be like first you have to pay 60%, then you have to pay 20% later. In all these schemes, what should you do? Where consideration of the parent is entitled for such transfers, etc., it is totaling to 1156 crores. It has not been recognized because on the point of these transfers, the parent did not meet the criteria. It was probable that will collect the consideration to which it is entitled. The parent company did not meet this criteria is what they have told. Now, what is this parent company? I have tried extracting it from the uh, MCA website. Let me just show you that. The parent company here. Uh, see, it's very difficult because it's a private company, right? It's called Think and Learn Private Limited. So this is the MGT7. I'll show you this later, but I've extracted it from the website. So if you see, it has uh, so many subsidiaries, guys. Spicadel Technologies, Span ThoughtWorks, Byju's K3 Education Private Limited, Byju's Incorporated, Tangible Play, Byju's Private Limited, all 100% subsidiaries. Directly one company, 100% subsidiaries everywhere. Interesting, we'll see this later. Let me just take you through Indias. I was just reading it. It's so nice, you know, to do all the subjects together. You know, it's like this multidisciplinary case study. Anyway, so I was reading Indias and I just uh, wanted to show you a few things which I have highlighted. Point number one, my dear friends, in para number nine, recognition as per Indias 115. What does it say? 
it is probable that the entity will collect the consideration to which is entitled for example the streaming for exchange of goods or service that will be transferred to the customer so when i am doing it at eighth standard when you join will i give you everything eight nine ten together only no obviously no right in evaluating whether the collectability of an amount of consideration is probable an entity shall consider only the customer's ability and intention to pay that amount of consideration when it is due i should check that amount of consideration which will end up be less than the price stated in the contract maybe less but more i can give discount and all those things so it's talking here about the ability and intention to pay point number 1 then if you see paragraph number i was just having a cursory glance of the same paragraph number 26 with respect to distinct goods or services what does it say providing a service of standing ready to provide goods or services for example unspecified updates to software etc whatever it is goods and services making available for a customer to use as and when the customer decides streaming service also will depend as and when i decide sometimes i can just uh, unsubscribe and then i can subscribe later you would have seen netflix whenever i don't want i can unsubscribe for it, the same right and then para number 31 satisfaction of performance obligation an entity shall recognize the revenue when or as the entity satisfies a performance obligation by transferring a promised good or service to a customer an asset is transferred as the customer obtains control of that asset so i will have have a control over next 6 months because i paid for 6 months after 6 months i will not have control of uh, the customer so should by juice recognize the full revenue or only that revenue what should i do is what they say performance obligation satisfied over time classic example of byju's para number 35 an entity transfers control of a good over time and therefore satisfies a performance obligation and recognize revenue over time this was the point of contention my dear friends if one of the following criteria is met para number 35 the customer simultaneously receives and consumes the benefits provided by the entity's performance as and when the entity performs yes eighth standard it will be taught now eighth standard when you come to ninth standard i'll perform again you will you know pay for it so as and when it is done very good para this is para number 35 then para 38 sub clause a the entity has a present right of payment of the asset if a customer is presently obliged to pay for an asset then that may indicate customer has obtained the ability to direct the use of and obtain substantially all the remaining benefits so here if i substantially pay for an asset now then it's okay but guys if it's a deferred revenue scheme even the recognition must be de deferred right so the major point of contention my dear buddies was this revenue recognition right as per the indas indas is what we have to check that is the first part i hope you understood right that was the first part this should be 115 sorry guys 115 got it that's what it is as9 or indas 115 now moving on one more deadly thing guys let us say by jews approach the parent parent said i don't have money sorry by jews said don't worry sir we have a tie up with icici bank they will give you loan sir how much let's say 5 lakh or let's say 1 lakh let, let me make it small 1 lakh rupees icici bank says bro by jews you have to give me a guarantee see here indian contract act is coming who's the guarantor by jews who's the surety you know sorry this person is of course the principal creditor parent is the debtor and by jews is the guarantor or the surety so by jews is guaranteeing the payment which means if the parent does not pay by jews has to pay that also i if i'm not wrong almost around 109 110 crore or something parents have not paid by jews has I have paid that also will don't you think so it should be adjusted from the revenue yes so in case where customers take a loan from by jews financing partners to pay for its courses and study materials the company has acted as a guarantor 
This means the company would be liable to make the loan repayments. Almost 110 crore default was there by the parents. Next. Baiju's acquired 74% stake in a tech company called White Hat Junior. You know, 6 standard only you can start all this uh, uh, coding, etc. For 1,327 crore in 2020. And if you read the audit notes, it has contributed 326 crore of total revenue. That's all. And total loss of how much, guys? 1,548. So, it did not make profit, White Hat Junior. Third problem with Baiju's. And guys, it granted 23,952 employee stock option, which the company, it cost them 465 crore. And uh, ESOP just contributed to 25 lakhs in the previous year. It will be taken later, but see, deadly. 465 crore worth of ESOPs they have given. That is one more problem. And guys, next problem with Baiju's were weak internal controls. The auditors Deloitte had to put in almost 3,000 to 3,500 extra man hours to make the revision of the revenue recognition. Go back and check each and everything, how many people have bought and what is the, is it deferred revenue, is it deferred revenue, is it uh, now immediately, all those things. And it doesn't come cheap. So for the year ended 31st March 21, statutory audit fees include 3.5 crore towards additional effort incurred in audit consequent to material weakness observed in internal control about this recognition. Everybody that everything they are dumping into the same thing, such a big company guys, it is very shocking to know all these things. Apart from that, the director generate of GST, intelligence, had finalized an investigation also against the books of uh, Baiju's from 2007 to 2020, GST, additional GST of 96.17 crore had to be paid. An interest of 27 crore and penalty of 14.43 crore, deadly. Nirmala madam would be smiling, but still guys, it's a huge red flag. Such a huge company, what were they doing all these years is something which is baffling. These are all some audit observations, right? Then, one more deal which was still stagnant is Akash. There was this IIT coaching center Akash. It's almost a 30-year-old uh, company. The shareholders Blackstone, Baiju's has to pay 1,983 crore. Deadline was September 23 or something. That also now is deferred to September 23. Uh, gone now. Uh, September is already gone. We are in October. This is again, further changes are there. There are certain M&A transactions which are required by uh, RBI. Uh, RBI regulation because some of the shareholders are outside India, uh, especially Blackstone and other things. So, RBI regulations because of that, they still money has not been transferred. Till now, that is uh, overall transaction 2,830 2 crore they have settled already, yet they have to pay 4,000 crore. Around 2,000 crore is still pending, as I told you, 1,983 crore is still pending. It will be paid only after the merger, which is awaiting an approval from NCLT. Here again, our Companies Act will come. NCLT approval is needed. Correct? So, these are all the crazy, crazy problems. Now, interesting thing, why I wanted to do this was, you know, uh, Chidambaram's son, Karthi Chidambaram. That's the irony. Karthi Chidambaram himself is embroiled in many controversies. Now, that fellow is coming now and telling that, boss, there is a problem. He has sent a letter on 14th October. Karthi Chidambaram, member of parliament, scam fellow. Sorry, but it's the truth, guys. I tell about him in uh, uh, PMLA. Karthi Chidambaram, son of P. Chidambaram, lungi man. I always, you know, I tell that in class, right? Brilliant. Chidambaram was brilliant. This guy is also brilliant. They were embroiled in the INX media case, which I have analyzed in PMLA. Paper 60, in-depth analysis. One hour I have spoken about this, if you remember. Right? So, from the Shivaganga, he has sent a, uh, what do you say, a letter to our uh, CA president. What does it say? Let's read. Review of the dear Debashish, Dr. Debashish Mitra, Baiju, Indian Educational Company, released the financial statement, all that. You have been quoted in the media saying that ICA is not looking into Baiju's account, but future review can't be ruled out. I would like to bring to your attention a number of red flags. First red flag. Analyzing how Baiju earns its money and where it spends is puzzling. Nearly 81% of its operating revenue is some sale of Edutech 
pro products. This includes sale of tablets, SD card, laptop for a net tech company. It is not blatant. Is it not a blatant misrepresentation of facts to classify hardware as a tech? So guys, this management has taken a stand. Alter also has taken a stand saying that I am selling a tech products. I agree. I am not selling a tablet. I am not selling a SD card. I am not selling a laptop. I am selling the content within that. No. So I also sell classes. I have my pen drive classes, Google drive classes. So when I'm selling this pen drive to you, am I selling an empty pen drive? No, I charge 8,000 rupees. Does this pen drive cost 8,000 rupees? No, there is content in it. So content when I sell, why can't I sell content? I am not selling an empty pen drive. So this particular point of Karthi Sinambaram, I don't agree personally. You also please tell me whether you agree or not in the comments. Guys, I put a lot of efforts in this video, almost like you know, 20, 25 hours of effort in every video. I want you guys to comment and share your thoughts. There's no harm in sharing your thoughts. I'm doing it for, you know, beneficial knowledge and mutually beneficial knowledge. So if you have any other point, let me know. Right? Yes. So, this point I don't agree guys, 81% of edtech products means, you know, operating revenue, obviously guys, when I am selling a pen drive, SD card, laptop, Baiju sells a laptop, you know, tablet and you open the tablet, Baiju's app will be there, all the content will be there inside, so I am selling that actually, and hardware is part of the entire deal, so I don't agree with this, second one. On the expenses front, 60% of the cost related to employees have been recognized as capital expenses rather than operational cost. If these costs were counted as a direct expense instead of capital expense, Baiju's loss would have been further, how much? 5,000 crore. Or gone over 5,000 crore. Now it's some 4,000 or it would have gone over 5,000 crore. Such irregular accounting practices fails to give a clear picture. Now guys, where if you are generating in-house intangible assets like software or app in case of Baiju's, it's an in-house software that they create. Then the employees who are working on this can definitely be capitalized. The employee cost can definitely be capitalized. Auditors have also agreed to this. Auditors, as per the relevant NDAs, auditors have to ensure that it is measurable, recognizable and related to the intangible asset. So it is measurable also, recognizable also. See guys, you have to analyze from various points of view. Right? So even this, maybe I don't agree with this. Third point, I agree. Baiju's are recognizing revenues from streaming services and in full commencement account, this I have already in-depth explained. Streaming services, now they have uh, con con you know, uh, shifted to deferred payment. It warrants opening of Baiju's financial statements as well. They are telling, please open the uh, financial statements. Please open the financial statements they are telling. Please open the financial statements is what they are telling my dear friends. So where would they open your? Check it out. One second. So where would you open the financial statement? See, they are saying this if it happens. Relevant earlier accounts are prepared in a fraudulent manner. Either the central government, income tax authority, SEBI, or any other statutory regulatory body or authority. He is actually enticing, he is actually, you know, sorry, inciting, not enticing. He is enticing us because we can share the knowledge. But he is, you know, poking, do it, do it, inciting rebellion, inciting, you know, this uh, provoking basically. Yes, so could be, could not be. Or he is also telling at least do a revision of financial statements. Voluntary revision of financial statements, do it. Because it's not complying with 129. It's not 129 talks about accounting standards. Not complying with accounting standards. See 129. It is talking about accounting standards. Shall be in according. According. It's not complying. Reopen. It's trying to tell with this one line. Very important. See. Baiju has really nailed off recently 2,500 employees gone. In the light of aforementioned issues, it's clear the company is not in sound set of financial in the interest of the consumers. I urge ICAI to review Baiju's financial statements. So your SRE will come, standards on review engagements. 
essays will come comparative financial statements you know all these essays corresponding figures comparative figures and all the other essays fraud if if fraud is there fraud may not be there guys come on it's not called fraud but what i'm trying to tell is all these essays will come going concern will uh, buy juice if it continues like will it go on forever 560 570 essay all that will come right so there's a subject called multidisciplinary case study which will which is there now already and it will also come for you where in the ca in the new syllabus that is coming so we can analyze all these things there so lastly guys let me just take you through mgt 7 and aoc 4 for you to get a fair idea as to how it is with great difficulty i've extracted this i still couldn't get the financial uh, statements properly i've just taken the extracts but uh, the full financial statements have not come it takes time if you know to come to the portal etc let's see see by juravindran at gmail.com that's the email of the company guys gmail.com i'm just saying no comments adopted financial statement when 29 12 2020 due date is this one all these things commercial industrial and all these finance this statement will be there this financial statement we are trying to figure out let's see consolidated ones this will be signed by the what do you say company secretary in practice and all those things Num membership number will be there come to mgt7 mgt7 is what will should be filed as per section uh, you know 92 of companies act annual return so you have your sin permanent account number registered office address Banergata main road think and learn private limited again you see this is the thing telephone number private company limited by shares again see education higher education all these things percentage of uh, turnover of the company description they have given educational support services also they are giving then see all these subsidiaries are there so many subsidiaries directly Guys, will the layer supply to wholly owned subsidiary? No, two clause 87 layers will not apply to wholly owned subsidiary. There's an exemption there. I had also uh, did, uh, you know, done the same in the J.K. Shah veranda uh, deal analysis. Equity shares, you see, authorized capital, total number, total amount is so much. So paid up is, right, 14, how much, 140 crores, sorry. Sorry, 1 crore 40 lakh 66,990. 1 crore 40 lakh 66,990. Number of equity shares, amount of equity shares, preference share capital also is there. Class of shares, nominal value, these are different. Again, class divided into class, unclassified is nothing like that. Breakup of pay paid up also, see, physical, DMAT, total. So, private company guys, nothing of this will come. Preference shares. If there is stock split, no stock split. Previous general meeting, AGM 14th, uh, 11, 2019 happened. All these things. Turnover. Number of shares held by individuals. Shareholding pattern, how many individuals, how many government. So, Indian Indians hold, non-residents don't hold. Foreign nationals are also holding. 1.16% of the entire share capital. Body corporate is holding so much total number of shareholders other than promoters 52 with promoters 55 as for companies that private company can go up to 200 earlier it was 50 now it's 200 right yes promoter three are there non-promoter nominee director see Baiju Rabindran, Riju Rabindran, Divya Gokul Nath, Ravi Shankar, Vivian, Russell Andrews. Additional director is Russell Andrews, change in designation. So you see guys, from additional director, he has been appointed. See again we see 161, from additional director, he has now become a director. Conversion of additional director to director, revision. Conversion of additional director to director requires compliance of 152.6 and 152.2. He will now come into the rotation mechanism. Everything you can discuss. Number of meetings, see EGM, EGM, AGM, so many EGMs were held. Number of members who attended, all these things are there. Board meetings, everything you will get in MGT7. 
See board meetings. These are all the board meetings held. So many board meetings were held. Committee meetings. Then of course attendance of committee meetings. None of the committees will apply, you know, for uh, private company. Attendance of directors. See all directors when did they attend? Remuneration. Baiju Ravindran. How much is the gross salary, guys? Seventy-two lakhs is being paid to him. This is for the remuneration details. This is for name, number, for the managing director. Managing director salary this is. Then other directors, other salary. 1 crore, 64 lakh, 70 thousand. Divya Gokul Nath, 1.94 crores. Penalty and punishment, if any, all these things. So Pratibha Priya is the, you know, associate certificate of practice they have given here. Company secretary who is signing and authorizing this entire deal thing. So this is all about it. So guys, everything I just want to tell you, please analyze it in depth. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and more importantly, comment. Comment your views on it. Comment your views and let me know if you want me to do many other videos. Any subject you tell me guys, I will study and do it. I have no problem. Okay. See you. Love you all. Take care.